Thank you, Nate. <laughs> I was on mute just so you could hear the uh, the synthesizer. Sorry about that. Okay, my name is Bill, <laughs> and this is Bill's Box of Sound. And let's start off the show with putting on a little bit of Diet Coke into our well, or whatever you plan on drinking. Okay, whatever you want to hear, whatever you want to drink. Oh yeah, get that in there. Nate, thanks so much. <laughs> I forgot that I muted myself for that introduction there. All right, yep, it's that time again when we're doing our thing, talk about music, talking about this, that, the other thing, records, etc. Oh, what are we going to start with this week? Why don't we get the bad news out of the way first? Bad news are deaths this week. Um, let's see. Uh, <clears throat> Eric Carmen, the, 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 the middle of the road pop guy from Cleveland who did the song All By Myself. He passed away this week. And uh, just wanted to show you some 
records from his band, The Raspberries, or just Raspberries. I, I guess they, they did not want to be called The Raspberries. They just called themselves Raspberries. As a matter of fact, on their third album, this, this is a cool re uh, looking record here. That's their third album. It's called Side Three. And it's got, you know, a little thing of raspberries here. And you open it up and it's got all the raspberries on a record with a little bit of whipped cream there. And then when you open it up and pull it out, you've got all sorts of wonderful action-packed photos of the band right there on both sides, different ones. And uh, when you take out the record, Nothing crazy. It's 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 the album starting. Oh, what? Oh, actually, wait a minute. I thought the name of the album was Side Three. Guess what? Somebody did a switcheroo on me. Because Side Three is the album that starts with uh, Tonight, Last Dance, Making It Easy on the Beach. Hard to get over a heartbreak. And look at this. I've got the album that came out after that inside of there. Starting Over. Which has probably their last big hit. Overnight Sensation um, hit record. Holy crap. I didn't think. <laughs> Shows you how long ago was the last time I pulled this record out. Because this came out in 1974 which is just about 50 years ago. And last Raz Raspberry slash Eric Carmen thing I'm going to show to you. Where is it? I had it right here. I had another Raspberries record. Where'd it go? Oh, I know where it went. It's right here. Raspberry's Best featuring Eric Carmen. Now, uh, some of their big hits were Go All The Way, Tonight, I Want To Be With You, Overnight Sensation, like I said before, and Starting Over. And what's really interesting is this uh, Best Of album tries to present itself as just a... Uh, a um, it's got these articles here. And then they say that these are continued on the other side. You flip it over to the other side, and you've got other stories and things like that. And then you've got right here, let's see, right there on the, it says, uh, continued on inner sleeve. You see that right there? Continued on inner sleeve. And in my copy, there's your inner sleeve. <laughs> now this one, I've got the correct record here. Raspberry's best featuring Eric Carmen. How freaky that is. I've got a side three cover with the uh, with the starting over record inside. Sometimes these things happen. Anyway, what's going on here? Uh-oh, we've already got a question from Greg R. in the chat room. He says... I just heard about the layoffs and shake up, shaking all over at Universal. Hope it doesn't affect Frank Zappa releases. This is the type of thing that I was afraid of when I found out they were selling the catalog and vault. Okay. Well, I don't know much of anything about Frank Zappa releases. I do know one thing. More are on the way. Don't know what, don't know where, but they are on the way. Sorry, I'm late. You're late! Where have you been? Uh, I forgot. Were you sleeping? No. You're in your, you're in your pajamas. I forgot. Brothers, sisters, and siblings, say hello to everybody's favorite, Roman! I know what you were doing. Let's see, you were either watching your iPad or playing a game. Were you watching a movie? No, I was watching my iPad, but I was about to log on to. Oh, okay. You say, like, oh, I think I'll go on YouTube. Hey, wait a second. Grandpa's on. 
Something's wrong here. <laughs> my, mom, my mom wanted me to get her something. Uh huh. So, and there was none left. So I told her. And oh, the Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Yeah, you guys went through 12 cans of that in a day. Can you believe that? Because remember yesterday you said, Grandpa, can you help me open up the box of Dr. Pepper? <laughs> so I did, and you went and got it. So, I don't know. The secret to, to, to making them last is to drink them. <laughs> you can't just uh, take a sip and leave it on the, on the counter. But anyway, but I think you've also got some Dr. Pepper upstairs too. So... You guys got pop. Anyway. Ah. <coughs> Excuse me. Kevin's here. Hello there. Let's see. Ooh, he's making ba bagels. <laughs> Should we go to see Dweezil in Cleveland or Denver or both? Oh, boy. Well, speaking of that, I'll get to that in a minute because... Uh, well, let's let's talk about some uh, anniversaries here. Yesterday was the anniversary of this coming out, uh, Zappa Mothers Roxy by Proxy, which is um, uh, mixes that Frank Zappa did of this. Um, and these these are uh, uh, work tapes for the Roxy album and or the um, the movie, the Roxy movie that came out. And these were all mixed by Frank way back 50 years ago. And this was part of some sort of a crowdfunding plan by Gail Zappa, where she said that, um, so we could raise enough money to make, to finish the movie, the, all, all the post-production. We want a thousand people to put up a thousand dollars so they can have the rights to get a copy of this master and manufacture and distribute this themselves. Oh, and by the way, if you sell those things, you have to give us profits. It was, it was just a weird, weird idea. I don't know, but it was Gail's idea. But eventually this thing did come out through the Zappa people. Roxy by Proxy. And um, all of the music on that is also represented in quite possibly the best Frank Zappa box set ever, uh, the Roxy Performances, which I believe is still in print. And I would highly recommend you getting it if you like Frank Zappa. And also, we are less than a week away from the 50th anniversary of the release of this thing here, which is also on my back wall, Apostrophe, one of Frank Zappa's most popular albums. And Dweezil Zappa is going out on tour. And he's got a whole bunch of tour dates ready for you. Uh, he's going to be in Phoenix, Arizona, El Cajon, California, L.A., San Francisco, Reno, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Boise, Idaho, Denver, Colorado, Minneapolis, Chicago, Newport, uh, Kentucky, Cleveland, which is where I'm going to see him at, uh, Royal Oak, Michigan, Pittsburgh, Morristown, New Jersey, Albany, New York, Portland, Maine, Medford, Maine, uh, I'm sorry, Medford, <laughs> Massachusetts, uh, Wallingford, Connecticut, Terrytown, New York, Huntington, New York, Red Bank, New Jersey, Glenside, PA, yeah, Glenside, PA, Richmond, Virginia, Alexandria, Virginia, Durham, North Carolina, Atlanta, GA, St. Louis, Missouri, and last but not least, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Now, when Dweezil was last on tour, it was March of 2020, and I went to the show in, I believe it was Kent. Yes, it was Kent. Was it Kent? No, or was it Columbus? Oh, shoot, I can't remember. Anyway, I went to that show with uh, my, uh, my buddy James, and less than a week after that, the pandemic shut the world down. 
So we've been waiting and we've been waiting and they announced the tickets and I got tickets for me and him. I am sorry, Kevin. Um, maybe I should have uh, th thought of you as well so we could have bought a whole bunch of those tickets, but we'll figure something out. Anyway, so we've also got Paul is in the house. Paul Ayers. Been digging for King Gizzard and Lizard Wizard a lot lately. Uh -huh, multi genre, but mostly amazing psychedelic rock. Well, anyway, um, what else we've got? And let's see. That's Vermont in a church. And sorry that Vermont show is banned from Utopia. Just got here. Uh, I don't know. That's listed on the Dweezil Zappa site. Anyway. Ah, it was Columbus. You are right. That is, you, you are co correct. Anyway, yes, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard is wonderful and fun stuff. Anyway, back to the, uh, the, the people that we, that we lost. We also lost Carl Wallinger, um, who was known, he pretended he was a whole band and he put out albums under the name World Party and had to hit Ship of Fools. And uh, here's a, the Goodbye Jumbo album uh, with a special promotional uh, cover that is kind of reminiscent of Led Zeppelin 3 because you can spin this CD around and see all the stuff in the little holes change, just like on the cover of Led Zeppelin 3. So, um, wasn't a big fan of a world party, but, um, I, I know that there are people who are very, very big fans of Carl Wallinger. Sorry to see that he is gone. <laughs> anyway, uh, also, um, there's a podcast I listened to this week, uh, Mark Barron's WTF podcast. Um, he did an interview with Thurston Moore, who was in the band Sonic Youth. And it was a great episode because they talk a lot about uh, noise rock and a lot of punk music. And he also talks about Jandek. He talks about his conversation with Jandek and uh, things like that. And uh, if, if you're into Spudlock, which I know some of you are, because there is the album that is available. We got to do our commercial for the album B by Spudlock. If you don't have it, why don't you? It's available on Bandcamp. Spudlock.bandcamp.com, spelled like this. And you can get it for your very own, or you can buy a download. And that's that. And I got some new records, so we're going to be talking about that as well. But yeah, check out the Mark Marin interview with Thurston Moore. That's that's a, a weird name, Thurston. I always, uh, I mean, the only time way that I had ever heard that first name before was on Gilligan's Island he had Thurston Howell III and uh, in the uh, comic strip High and Lois their drunk next door neighbor his name was Thirsty which is short for Thurston <laughs> so that's that okay so that's that um, let's talk about the records that I bought today there was a flea market down at the Winchester in Lakewood Ohio went out to that and uh, bought a couple of records. This one is just plain interesting. John Anderson, Song of Seven. Um, lead, Ex-lead singer of Yes. And you never know, he could come back to, to, to Yes. You never know. But he has a reputation for making fairly unlistenable solo albums. I mean, you may love them. You may love them. You may like them a lot, but I'm not a huge fan of them, but this is really, really inexpensive. So I picked that up. Uh, this has some cool people on it though. Uh, Morris Pert plays drums. Um, John Giblin, 
uh, from from Brand X as well. Uh, we've got uh, Clem Clemson, who played guitar for the sensational Alex Harvey band. And who else you got? Oh, of course, John Anderson on keyboards and vocals, and he wrote all the songs on here. And a very colorful album cover. So that's, the, that's that. Uh-oh. Roman will be returned after these messages. Since I didn't have this, and I've seen several people post this online and say it was wonderful, picked up a copy of Robin Trower Live. The, the cover is not that great of a condition, but uh, the record's in really nice shape. And uh, let's see. Third album I picked up today is... I already have this, but my copy is like really beat up. So, I uh, picked up a new copy of Who's Next. I'm, I've got high hopes for this because whoever had this previously cleaned it up really nice and put it inside of a very good sleeve. Record looks nice. It does look like there are some scratches on it. It has been well loved, but you know... If if uh, if the scratches aren't deep, you may not hear them on the actual record. So I'm looking forward to putting that in the old ultrasonic machine and checking that out. Um, other records I got this week. And first one was this one, Blue Cheer, the 67 Demos. This is their demo tape, which got them their contract with Philips. And man, this is heavy, heavy music. Very, very heavy stuff. And the thing is, there's only, it says it's only a one-sided record on white vinyl. It's got three songs on it, it's about 20 minutes long. And then when you flip the side over, it's got like a, a minute and a half commercial for the Blue Cheer album, Vincibus Eruptum. Yes, may I help you? <laughs> and the last new record I got this week is the second Flo and Eddie album. I bought this on eBay for 10 bucks. And yes, that's right, it is a promo copy, white label promo, no less. And uh, in rather good shape, except for this piece of tape on the front cover. So that's that. So, all right, people are talking about Dweezil's tour here. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Do we know who is in Dweezil's band? When I think Roxy, I think Ruth. Well, Ruth is pretty much retired from the business right now. Um, but, uh, yep, Sheila Gonzalez and Kurt Morgan. And... Um, Let's see. Um, I know I found this on uh, on Andrew Greenaway's page. So let me uh, whip it out here. Zappanews.co.uk. Um, all right. In Dweezil's band. Let's see. Where is it? I, I thought I saw a list. Here we go. All right. So it's going to be Kurt Morgan on bass, Ryan Brown on drums, Sheila Gonzalez on sax and keys, uh, and two new guys, um, Zach Tabori, who recorded a record with Tommy Mars and had artwork by Kyle Schenkel, and a guy on keyboards, Bobby Victor of a group called Pizza Bees. And um, what's really cryptic is that Dweezil posted something on Instagram and on his site that said something about having two drummers in the band. I don't know. I'd love to see two drummers. They are celebrating the 50th anniversary of Apostrophe, and also the 50th anniversary of Roxy and Elsewhere, which comes later this year. Pour a little bit more Diet Coke here. Uh, 
Also, if you follow Dweezil on Instagram, he posted the audition tape of the two guys, the two the two new guys, the guitar player and the keyboard player that are coming to the band. And this video has them playing portions of Echidna's Arf. Etc. So they're playing it on keyboard and guitar at the same time, making no mistakes. And after they go through it once, they start singing along with it. Not just singing the notes, they're singing harmony notes. Each of them singing different harmony notes. <laughs> yes, wonderful stuff. So, yeah, um, I, I, I definitely want to go and see this Rock's Postrophe Tour. But, uh, oh yeah, I know. But uh, we, we've got all sorts of good things. I mean, two keyboard players, one of them can uh, uh, can uh, duplicate a lot of the percussion parts on the keyboard. But yeah, I'd love to see a live percussion player, uh, aside from the drummer, on the tour. So, yeah, never know. What's this here? Scat? <laughs> well... I wasn't exactly scatting. I was trying to sing the actual melody to Echidna's Arf of You, which appears on Roxy and elsewhere. Uh, Roman has departed for a bit, so I'm going to have to put the camera back on myself. Anyway. Um, and so those are the dates and... I'm also going to be going to see Primus in August. And um, I don't know who's going with me to see that show. That That's going to be awfully damn uh, interesting. Uh, da -da -da -da. What else we got going on here? Yeah, I'll talk about this next thing. All right. Last week, I put out a video... That that was mostly excerpted from one of these um, one of these live streams right here. It was a review of this box set, "Adverse Yaw" by Les Claypool, "The Prawn Song Years," featuring all of these albums. You saw that. Anyway, somebody wrote a comment on it, and. I'm going to read this to you. I'm not going to say who, who did it, but this guy says, um, or, or, or I mean, it's man, woman, it's, it's, it's one of our siblings. He says, back in the day, I had many records on vinyl. When CDs came out, the sound quality was so much better than I had ever heard on vinyl. Is it the same now? Or is it, or is vinyl all that much better since it's later on in years and they have improved it? Or what is the big deal about vinyl? Is it just a popular thing with young people now because they didn't have it as kids? Ugh. I kind of got upset when I read that because, yeah, in uh, 1983, when compact discs first came out I heard them and I was excited because the majority of turntables out there if you didn't spend a significant amount of money on them I mean you gotta you, you gotta face it record players turntables they could be had very inexpensively of course you could spend a lot of money on them but uh, you know and and, and to and to make yourself really hi-fi with your records, uh, you had to spend a significant money and uh, get yourself a decent turntable, get your cal uh, cartridge calibrated and stuff like that. So a lot of people didn't have great record players. But when the CDs came out, all you need is that little box. Slam the CD in the slot and you've got 
sound like you've never heard before. No ticks, no pops, no tape hiss, silence in the background. It was seductive, and I bought into it really big. I mean, you see all the records I've got in this room because I've been collecting records since I was like five years old. But in the other room, I've got almost as many compact discs. <coughs> Pardon me. And now, the science of not only making records, but also playing back records has advanced so much that for as little as a couple of hundred dollars, you can get yourself a turntable that uh, pretty much rivals the sound of a CD player. Spend a bit more, like up, upwards of a thousand, and you can have something that sounds unbelievable. They're making records better. CDs in the 90s started getting into this thing where they figured out how to make CDs sound louder by compressing the signal and degrading the signal. And this led to the loudness wars, and a lot of CDs just did not sound as good as they could. The compact disc has a lot of potential, but digital recording and digital playback was still pretty darn new. So people became very happy and were just content with their CDs because, hey, it's convenient. Grab a CD, pop it in there. Instead of taking a record and taking it out, don't touch the playing surface. Keep it clean. Get yourself a, a, a dust brush to, to clean them off with. And don't throw them around the house. A lot of people are very, very um, careless with what they're doing. And even now, you got these cro uh, uh, the inexpensive Crosley turntables. By the way, Crosley does make some good turntables as well that have magnetic cartridges and also replaceable cartridges. But the majority of Crosley turntables that you see in stores are really cheap. They use a very cheap, inexpensive transport system, which has a lot of error in the speed of the record going around. They use ceramic cartridges with sapphire tip needles, not diamond styluses. So... There's a lot of ways that you can go wrong with a record. It's easier to make a bad sounding record than it is to make a great sounding CD. But there's been a lot of advancement in the science and the manufacturing of records. And you pull out an old record that's been taken care of, that was made properly back in the day, it sounds better than a CD does today. And, you know, there are those young people who collect it just because they think it's neat. Records are wonderful things. I mean, come on. You've got the size. You've got the liner notes. You can actually read them in most cases. Just having a tactile thing in your hand instead of just having a little tiny CD, well... This is a, a nice CD. This is made for me by uh, DJ Trish. But CDs, for the most part, very small. You, you try reading the, the uh, liner notes. And even if you're not old, you got <laughs> to get the old uh, magnifying glass out to read the teeny tiny writing in there. So there's all sorts of things. If you care about music and if you care about sound, you can get a good sounding system without having to spend thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars. So what can you do? 
Let's catch up with some of you folks in the chat room here. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, Earthless is touring. They're pretty heavy. I, I wouldn't mind checking the, them out. Let's see. Nate says that that to comment sounds like it was from a bot. Yeah, I don't think so. It's, it's possible. You never know. Let's see. Oh, Chief Dancing Ostrich. That's okay. Just happy to have you here either way. Let's see what else we got here. The first release that you got on CD was Lou Reed, New York in 1989. Oh, yeah. Not a bad album. And that, that was one of the first CDs to use CD plus graphics technology, which really came out and just went away. CD plus graphics. CD plus G. It was also on the Information Society CD. Uh, that was a big, big failure. Let's see. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, how many times have you seen that cartoon? The things I like about vinyl is the expense and the, incon and the inconvenience. Uh, let's see. We've also got CDs can get dirty. dirty. Yes, they can. And CDs can get scratched as well. Um, and cassettes and m memory cards. Yeah, anything can. You, know, you got to take care of your stuff, man. Uh, CDs were all about portability. Um, for a lot of people, you are absolutely right. Uh, when I first heard a compact disc for the first time in 1983, it was a digital recording of Stravinsky's... Um, was it the right? It was either the right of spring or firebird. I, I think actually, I think it was the firebird, uh, the ballet, not the suite. And I, I was amazed because I was at a high end audio store and they were playing it through some really good amplifiers, some really good speakers. And it was played loud and it was like the Max Cell guy <laughs> all over again. That was pretty amazing. But as things got on, uh, got uh, moving onward and CDs became more inexpensive and just commonplace, people love the convenience. And now it's down to you've got low resolution streaming through Spotify or whatever, you know, if you want high quality streaming, you got to spend some money as well. If you want high quality, you got to pay for it. But if you want music on the cheap, pfft, whip out your phone. Yeah, you know, I got over 33,000 songs in this thing. And you can just pop it in there. You, you, you know, use the, the, the speaker on here, or you can stream it to a DAC on your st uh, stereo system. Um, I mean, the convenience of MP3 and AAC files is wonderful. And I work really hard on making my digital music library sound good. But at the end of the day, when I want to hear something that sounds awesome, that's what does it for me. A record. You know, all of, of the jumping through hoops that you, get, that you gotta do, it's worth it. And this thing here says, uh, is it just a popular thing with young people because they didn't have it as kids? Well, guess what? I'm not a kid. I go on Medicare in a couple of months, my friend, and I have loved records ever since I was a child, and I still do. You know, I just, I just finished showing you three new records I bought today, and I can't wait to listen to them. And um, let's see, you've got an 8-track tape, but nothing to play it on. I've still got an 8-track machine, but 8-tracks, they, they don't necessarily wear out faster than they decay. 8-tracks, they, they just go bad. And as a matter of fact, I, I need to watch uh, Malcolm Tent's uh, live stream, um, which was on Facebook and also on YouTube this week. He talks about 8-tracks, um, which I'm looking forward to because 
Eight track collecting was a lot of fun, a lot of pain as well, where they would break a song up by cutting it in two because they had the four separate programs in there. There were a lot of things wrong with eight tracks, <laughs> but some people did love them. Anyway, so Spaghetti, Spaghetti Lee, good to see you. Uh, we'll catch the rest in replay. Thank you so much. So that is what's going on with that. What else is going on with you folks? Been watching some stuff on YouTube. I, um, I'm in the middle of watching Rick Beato's uh, interview with George Benson, which is turning out to be really, really good. Um, I really enjoyed his interview with Stuart Copeland. Uh, especially because Stuart Copeland did a podcast with Bob Lefsetz, and that was really good, but they didn't cover a lot of intense musical things and recording things. Rick Beato, on the other hand, he talks to him all about that stuff, and Stuart is just as entertaining uh, uh, with Rick Beato as he was with Bob Lefsetz. He just talks about different things. And man, I just, I just enjoyed the heck out of the interview. Um, and so now uh, Rick Beato has interviewed all three police members. Uh, he interviewed Sting first, and recently he had um, Andy Summers in his uh, studio. Haven't watched all of that one, but I want to finish watching George Benson first before I do that. Oh, Zappa fans, Zappa fans. If, if you're falling asleep, wake up for a second. On Monday, this album here is going to be spotlighted on Abigail DeVoe's Vinyl Monday. Now, if you are not familiar with that YouTube channel, Abigail DeVoe, D-E-V-O-E, -E, she has a a YouTube channel, and the main thing about it is every Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern, she posts Vinyl Monday, which is a spotlight being anywhere from 23 minutes to an hour or more, spotlighting one specific album. And this Monday, she's doing apostrophe. So... Anytime after 11 a.m. on Monday, which is March the 18th, you know, as, as you are digging yourself out from your post-St. Patrick's Day stupor, which I will not, <laughs> because, um, I don't know, I, St. Patrick's Day, for, for, for a lot of folks, it's, it's amateur hour. People just use it as an excuse to drink even more than, than they usually do. Eh, drinking's fun, but <laughs> it's not a sport. <laughs> anyway, um, what else we got here? A probe DJ in 82 was happy not carrying vinyl around anymore. And you know what? Yeah, I still love spinning vinyl with two turntables. But when I have a DJ gig, I've got my laptop and I've got a little control board, which allows me to uh, queue up and cue, and uh, uh, and uh, and play and beat match and scratch my my files on my computer. It makes it so easy, and uh, yeah, uh, it's it's made DJ e e DJing easier, but. I, th there is just n nothing that beats the pleasure of spinning two vinyl records back and forth and queuing those up and stuff like that. It's, uh, to me, it's just more fun. And, oh, Vendetta, we got some more stuff from, from you saying, speaking of younger people, I'm Generation Z, you're a Zoomer, you're a Zoomer, and you collect records because you got the collecting gene from my parents. Yay! Also, I get a lot of dopamine from having music in my hands. Not sure how else to describe it. Yeah, just having the music here. This room gives me so much pleasure. Um, 
Or just just go and it's like uh, you know, pull yourself out a Prince album. Kaboom! Sign of the Times. Oh man, great record. Let's put that away. Let's see. Were there a couple of other things I wanted to talk about? Uh, no random 45s this week. Sorry about that. But uh, I got rid of a whole bunch of random 45s that um, I didn't need, but hopefully somebody else will. A friend of mine who is in the uh, Northeast Ohio Vinyl Club on Facebook, uh, he frequently attends shows and sells records. As a matter of fact, uh, the records that I bought today were from him. And he said that he would display these records and give them away for me. So that was a lot of fun. But um, DJ Trish, if you are watching, just I want to let you know, I, I, I'm working on your CDs and you'll, you'll, be getting, you'll be getting a mix or two soon. So that is that. Um, I think Roman is not going to be coming back. <laughs> So, in a few minutes, we will be uh, doing the end of the show and uh, making more noise. Also, you know, I've never seen the documentary, The Kids Are All Right with The Who. I have to check that out. I've heard it's really, really good. Um... I also saw a, uh, a documentary on, I believe it was Peacock, about, uh, about Prince, and it was something about the, the final secret. And it's kind of like a, it's not an official biography of him, but it follows his whole career, and then at the end it says, well, his final secret was his philanthropy. Prince gave a lot of money to, uh, to people and remained anonymous when he did so, which I thought was really, really cool of him. But uh, it's it's amazing how many charities Prince benefited and did not take any credit for it. So that was pretty cool. Um, also watched the We Are the World documentary, uh, which is... Um, I believe on Netflix, that's really good, whether you like the music or not. It's interesting how they made that thing happen. So that is that. All right. So that's about all that's been happening here. We are 48 minutes into the extravaganza. Um, once again... If you don't already have the Spudlock record, I'm going to pop it up on the screen here, the little banner. Let's see here. Also, please, please, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I really do appreciate anybody who uh, comes around to this channel and watches my videos um, or my live streams or both. A lot, of, a lot of you folks watch both, and I'm very, very thankful for that. Uh, working on a couple new videos. Not going to say what they are, but I'm working on a couple new ones. And let's see. Wow, that is all the things I want. Oh, two more deaths. <laughs> and I'm not... <laughs> oh, so that's what brings up... You do the peace sign... It brings up the balloons. Very cute. Very cute. No, no, no. This is uh, this is a, a sad stuff. Steve Lawrence died of Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet. Now, I know that the majority of people who are watching are saying, who the hell is he? But um, he was big in, uh, in, in, your, in probably your grandparents' music. Uh, he he uh, had a song called Go Away, Little Girl that was popular. And he also was a popular duo with Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet way, way back in the 60s and maybe the early 70s. So that's insignificant. But significant is there's a good chance that if you are watching this, you consider yourself part of the vinyl community on YouTube or on, um, on Twitch. 
because I'm also on Twitch at uh, twitch.tv slash Bill's Box of Sound. And I've been making videos in and be, being a part of the vinyl community. I mean, you, you don't have to fill out a form or ask somebody's permission to be part of the vinyl community. If you enjoy your vinyl records and you make videos about them, or if you just like watching videos about people talking about vinyl records, you are part of the vinyl community. There was a guy called Memphis Vinyl Jim who passed away this week. He hasn't made, uh, hadn't made any videos for the last couple of years, but he was a frequent contributor. Uh, him and his wife, the missus, uh, lived in Memphis, Tennessee, and uh, I believe he, uh, he eventually moved to Florida for health reasons, and he had been sick for quite a while, and I just found out uh, a few days ago that uh, Memphis Vinyl Jim, with the hat, uh, passed away. Very sorry to hear that. Uh, condolences to his wife and his family, and... Uh, not often that you hear about somebody in the vinyl community passing away. Maybe people just fade away. I don't know. But that is that. And, um, oh, and, and thank you, Kevin. He says it's a happy edition. Yeah, I sold a couple more copies of, of uh, today. And uh, Triumph Hi-Fi says, the music selection offerings from the online algorithms are fantastic. Discovered tons of music I now love. Well, you know what? That, that is one very good thing about digital music. It allows you to discover new things and find out new, thing, new things to buy. For example, this uh, Blue Cheer record that I bought this week. The reason I bought this is I heard it on Grown Man Record Night. And I heard this, and after picking my jaw up off the floor, I said, how do I get this? And I went and I ordered this off of Amazon. And man, is it heavy. Man, is it good. Now if I could just find myself a clean copy of Vincibus Eruptum. I've got it digitally, but I want it on vinyl. And I'm wondering, mono or stereo? That is a debate that's going on. Anyway, uh, that is about it. Coming up to the end of the hour, stay tuned for your local news, except on the West Coast. And uh, next week, I hope to be back with you with more interesting information uh, and more news talk and just plain silly stuff talking about music. And uh, ah, you never know. I may, I may have a guest or two on the, on, the, on the show. Can't make any promises though. But I will wish you peace and balloons. The balloons are also for um, <laughs> uh, 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 Samantha and Chris. My daughter and her husband, who both celebrated birthdays this month, and we had we had three great celebrations. One two weeks ago, they came over. We had uh, we we cooked out because we had, we had some great weather. had had a great feast. Last week we went out, went out for Mexican food. Ah, beautiful! And today, just for fun, they came over and. Uh, Let's see. We we had some wine. We had some uh, some guacamole with some uh, cheese. We had some shrimp, and just um, snacked away on stuff. Three weeks, three Saturdays, three great celebrations. So thanks to my family for that. And also, it's almost a month until Record Store Day, we got to start talking some more about that because I'm finalizing the stuff that I want to get for Record Store Day, and I plan on doing a uh, extended uh, show about that. So that's it. I'm going to turn off the microphone, or I, I might keep it on. You never know. I may even pull the guitar out, but I'm going to play some more noise uh, on the synthesizer. Thank you for stopping by. I had a great time. I hope you did too. We'll see you next week.
That's it. Good night. Thank you again. Really appreciate you. And we'll see you next week, most likely.